Patience and perseverance were qualities required by the 141 competing crews at the 2022 Rolex Duralia. In face of the light winds which dominated the 69th edition of the race, significant emphasis was placed on teamwork and navigation. Beautiful, exacting, rewarding. The 69th edition of this distinctly Franco-Italian offshore race produced a truly memorable Rolex Duralia 2022. From the start in Saint-Tropez, the race promised to be challenging. The fickle light breeze testing crews as they navigated to the iconic Giralia Rock. For those that rounded under the cover of night, it proved to be a magical experience. And in the daytime, the slowly passing crews had time to bask in the rock's incredible natural beauty and mystical charm. Ahead Genoa was set to welcome the first arrival, an accolade which went to the 100-foot Wally Magic Carpet Cubed, and then to the race for the overall winner on corrected time. As an eye-catching variety of yachts strove to reach the finish line, each was hoping that their efforts may be enough to claim the main prize. Their endeavour was rewarded with a warm welcome at the Yacht Club Italiano, where the smiles told their own story. And as dawn broke on Friday morning, Lisa R, a Kerr 46, crossed the finish line to post an unassailable corrected time and secure overall victory. Okay, winning the Rolex Giralia overall and corrected uh, really is a dream come true. We came with this team very close to winning it last year, so it's really a dream come true. The Italian crew's remarkable achievement was celebrated by peers as they were crowned the overall winners of the Rolex Urania 2022. This is the weekly sailing highlights show, World on Water, June 24, 2022. Last Sunday the 52nd Newport to Bermuda race got underway in wildly varying conditions. Making the best of the conditions was the performance Mod 70, Argo. Averaging 19.24 knots Argo finished the course in 33 hours and 9 seconds. At approximately 16.42 hours last Sunday, Christopher Stammelmajors, Grand Mistral 80, Osprey, entered the course of the Newport Bermuda race, and brought to an end one of the most unusual starts to the race in recent memory. The first classes started in a 22 knot southwesterly in a ripping ebb tide, followed by a brief influx of dense fog, a period of sunshine, and then a line of soaking thunderstorms that halted the starting procedure. By the time the last three classes got underway on the backside of the line, the last classes could barely get across the starting line. Fortunately, the ebb tide out of Norragansett Bay was still pushing the fleet toward Bermuda. Following, were the two trimarans, Argo and Ultima Motion 2, who were joined by 11th Hour Racing's Imoka 60, Mwama, skippered by Charlie Enright. Argo set a particularly fast pace across the line, with its starboard float clearing the committee boat by mere feet as it sped onto the racecourse. It seemed like only five minutes later when Argo was crossing tacks with Spirit of Bermuda. Many of the class starts, including those in the double-handed, Finister and, St. David's Lighthouse divisions, were held in a gusty southwesterly that piped up to 23 knots on the committee uh, tell boat. Tell us a little bit about your background with Double Handed. <laughs> well, I've been involved in, in promoting and, and operating in the single and double handed environment for 30 years, um, 32 years now, since 1990. Um, there's a lot of boats, I, I haven't counted recently, but there's about 20 boats in the double handed class. Um, Many of them are veterans of what's called the Bermuda 1-2, which is an off-year race. And um, uh, it's a single-handed down to Bermuda from Newport. And then there's a, a few days to recover from your scooter injuries and during dark and stormies. And then it's a double-handed race back to Newport. Yes. And so just while we're just what, to yeah. bring it back, we're, Go. we're, we're going upwind right now with uh, 11th Hour. Yep. They've got their... Um, so they're, they're both that can foil. Uh, can you explain that for the, the crew, what that means with their outboards there? And 
Right, so in the last few years, the proposition of foiling has become very much the front end of high performance racing. And the idea is that the boats have a shaped device uh, that runs through the hull. You can pull it up on one side when you don't need it. But when you deploy it to the leeward side, it lifts the boat out of the water. And you've probably all seen the YouTube footage of the French solo boats completely out of the water and sailing on about 15 or 18 inches fore and aft of one of these foils and one of the rudders in the water sort of just and obviously having the displacement of the boat out of the water all of the wetted surface and the weight of the boat up in the air uh, the boats can crack off some tremendous speeds three Two, one. So that is the start of class 16. Um, so that was one of our bigger classes. Um, oh. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right, sorry guys, we're just getting some feedback. So the race committee has decided to put up AP to see if this storm passes by. Day four of the North American Star Championships was a blowout so there was no racing. Two of the top contenders discussed the regatta. Day four of the 2022 Star North American Championship blew in like a wrecking ball and peaked well over the limit this class likes to race in. So the Annapolis Yacht Club race committee officials decided to hoist the AP over A and give everyone a head start to packing up their boats and shipping out. Well, the star boat, for me, I sail the star boat because it's the easiest, cheapest way to get into top, top of the line competition. And I enjoy the, the work and working on the boats and tweaking them and getting them all so that they're prepared and ready for the event. And it's fun in the parking lot to have all these star boats here and everybody kind of working on them and talking about them. And I think we're all a little obsessed with them. And uh, that's fun for me. Can we get some hiking here? <laughs> Look at that! Second place, Augie Diaz, Bruno Paz. celebrated this year's champions at the awards ceremony where many class trophies were awarded, including the overall podium. In second place and first in the Grandmaster right. Division, Augie Diaz Augie and Bruno Prada, both well-decorated star sailors. So we saw really good conditions uh, this weekend on uh, Thursday and Friday. Uh, we were very fortunate to get two really good days of sailing in, total of five races. Um, I think the first day it was not necessarily blowing too hard, but with the current going out against uh, the wind, the waves were a little bit hard to manage. And I think that uh, uh, gave the fleet a little bit of a hard time. But I think also with the triangle courses, uh, we're able to sail and just do the one uh, jive and then downwind you have to uh, be a little bit more careful but uh, it was great racing and uh, just really feel fortunate to end up in second place we I don't feel like we sailed our best event and uh, so I very, feel very fortunate that we we ended up second and I think you know Jack Jennings and Pedro Truch are very deserving winners so the fact that we didn't get to sail today is probably not that bad because they were very much on their game and did a very good job uh, to win the regatta. And in first place, earning his silver star for winning a North American championship, 
Jack Jennings hailing from Chicago, and Pedro Truch from Brazil. Congratulations. I first saw Pedro sailing actually on the uh, SSL finals. So I saw it on TV, and he was sailing with a guy named George Cerise, and they were doing uh, amazing in the regatta. And uh, they actually won the regatta. They won the last day, beat all these great star champions. And I said, okay, this guy is the top crew. So um, I was sailing a regatta and I needed a guy. And I think, I don't even know how I got his contact information, but I, I got his, in, maybe he was on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. first text, text me on Facebook. Yeah, so I texted him on Facebook and said, are you available to come sailing with me? And uh, he was, and so that was it. I think I really, Feel the boat like I really enjoyed sailing star as a crew. You know, I'm I'm start sailing the optics, lasers, fin, and then start crewing in the star. But I'm super happy. Like. So this event uh, was a tough one. I told Pedro before the event started. I said let's not have any expectations and just worry about uh, sailing the boat well. Um, so we did quite well on the first day and. And when the second day started, I just told Pedro the same thing. Don't worry, it's 0-0 zero, zero right now. Let's just try and make some good races and uh, see where everything plays out. But didn't really have any expectations to do as well as we did. There was a lot of great sailors here, and I think we were pretty lucky um, that uh, we didn't have any breakdowns. There was a lot of guys that had some breakdowns. There were some collisions even that took some really top sailors like uh, John McCausland, Eric Doyle, uh, Chris Larson, you know, all those guys kind of had a, a race where they had to miss because of a, a breakdown or an accident. So uh, we were lucky that we avoided that. Special thanks to the Chesapeake Bay Yacht Racing Association for sponsoring the video coverage, and congratulations to everyone in attendance, especially the ones heading home with the trophies this year. For T2P TV, this is Ashley Love. With a second end in the first race and a first in this race, that is a strong start for the Pied Piper. Jack Jennings and Pedro Troush. Day 6 of the Ilka Six Masters World Championships and all the world champions in all the divisions are named. Look out for the Apprentice Masters fleet, Grandmaster. Final day at the 2022 Ilka Six Masters World Championships and there were some changes at the top of the fleet. One light and one medium race were sailed just before the cutoff time and we have two great interviews for you. Final day at the Ilka Six Masters World Championships here in Port Vallarta. You can probably hear behind me, the party's already started. Man to my right, Grand Master. That sounds very good, doesn't it? It does. A champion, can you just tell us a little bit about your regatta before we all get very drunk? Uh, yes, uh, well, the regatta was fantastic. We had wind every day. The forecast originally was not so great but in the end we were hiking virtually every race i and i always believe the now cast rather than the forecast i know it, it was not what they thought and the race committee did a great job because we sailed late the other day and finished late but it was i was we were in the straps virtually every race yeah i mean blue skies lots of heating it's gonna come it, it got a little hot from time to time when we were landing on shore so a few people had to deal with that but you know, I, I love it here. It's a fantastic place to sail. I'm, I'm in t-shirt number four already. <laughs> it might be number five by the end of the evening. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about main rivals and uh, how you put together the regatta? Yeah, we, we had a, a guy that I hadn't met before. His name is David. I don't remember. He's from Australia, from Perth. Fantastic uh, fellow. And he gave, us, gave me a real run. And we had another fellow 
from Argentina that was really strong, and then my mate, Andrew, that was my training partner through the winter. So the four of us battled for the three spots. So it was- And, and it was, four into three doesn't go, 2012 oh, Olympic someone, Games. Yeah, someone was gonna not be super happy, but we had a great battle all the way to the end. And I won by like a few points, and he was second by a few points, and then Andrew was uh, unfortunately the fourth, but uh, excellent fleet, good fun racing. And do you think doing the previous week in the Ilka Sevens helped, hurt, or somewhere in between? I'd say somewhere in between. It's a long haul, but you did start to sort of try and see the trends a little bit more, but it's a long haul. I think this is probably the only time I'll do this. I, I don't think I'll do this again. Too much. In 2016, I did uh, a week here coaching and a week after, and I found that, that too much. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. It's, uh, it's pretty hot, and uh, it's just a lot of sailing in a few weeks, so this will be the last time I do that, I think. <laughs> famous last words well thanks again and it's dinner time yeah thanks for that john all right so the most intense battle of the ilka six world championships was undoubtedly in the legends division the man to my right is going to tell you the full story first of all introduce yourself yeah my name is chris boom from san francisco and uh, i started sailing lasers in 1970 when my good friend don trask called me and said Hey, Boomer, uh, I've got some boat I think you'll like. And he w went to Alameda, and he had 10 boats on a trailer, and we sailed them. And that's now where we <laughs> practice out of, too. And it, and it was obviously right by the fact you're still sailing them. <laughs> well, I, I've had, I work for Bariant Winches uh, for big boats and stuff. So I've had, I started sailing in the 70s, and I, and I raced in the first two world championships. And then, uh, I did, but I had like 15 and 20 year gaps. So I'm just coming back to it now, and I realized I should have never left. I'm so pleased to hear you say that. And just tell us about your week. I mean, it was a pretty frantic final day. Yeah, we had our... Actually, the first, this is the first regard I ever had a coach. I had uh, Luke uh, Elliott from Australia. And Swifto to his friends. Swifto, yeah, he was, <laughs> he was fan. He was so patient with us old guys. I mean, watching his drop sheets and stuff like that. But Well, some of the young guys, we do that as well. And I can tell you, he was pretty excited to be watching that last race. Yeah. Well, he and Thomas Saunders were betting when I would hit a mark or tip over or something like that. But at, at, our, at our meeting, I said, well, I can win if, if Bill's got a black flag and I beat him in the next race. And? And he got a black flag in the first race, and I got ahead of him and worked very, I mean, I was dead tired. Bill, Bill Symes, he, he dropped one race because he didn't have hydration. He is the gold standard still. And that's, that's a lesson to us all, the electrolytes, the fluid. Right. I mean, you, right. you couldn't drink too much, could I you? I never drank as much as, <laughs> without having a beer, I never drank as much as I ever, uh, this week. And it really helped. Again, that was, again, Luke. Luke was helping. Um, but... But I can't say enough about Symes because I went down to ISA in January, went to a clinic that Bill ran, and realized how much I didn't know and how much I should have remembered. And um, so and then I was training back home with John, John Andron, who won the last race today, and another guy, uh, Al Sargent. And uh, we were kind of, well, well, we'll try to get on the podium with Bill, you know, and, and then because he, he had his problem with the hydration race then he was over early and all of a sudden the last race we started and he was a little late because of the, the to play it safe I guess yeah. and then I had a lead on but I know he passes me he's passed me like three times on the last little reach before the lowered mark so I was uh, working very hard and it was uh, basically in the first laser worlds I was third it took me 48 years to move up two spots. On the That's point. amazing. But it's it's really fun, fun group of people. I feel blessed to be able to be do, at age 75 to be able to do this kind of thing. I know um, we're so happy to have you guys with us. Yeah, I'm, I, there's so many people that don't have the the health to do what we do, and it's just uh, really is a blessing. And, and, and to have so many good friends is fantastic. Brilliant. Well, I, thank you so much for your time. Just for the folks at home, uh, they finished second and third in the final race, and it was who beat who for the world title. That's pretty pretty impressive stuff. And I, I, I didn't expect it. I'll tell you, but I'll take it. But Bill, really, he's. He's still the gold standard in our fleet. We have to work harder. Well, there's, there's Thailand next year, but I think it's probably beer time. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Many congratulations to all the world champions. Chris Boom in the Legend Fleet, Jeff Lucemore in the Great Grand Masters Fleet, Al Clark in the Grand Master Fleet, Ian Gregory in the Masters Fleet, and finally John Emmett in the Apprentice Masters Fleet.
Day 2 of the Flensburger Siegel Club 2022 5.5 meter German Open. With four race wins out of seven races, Artemis has won the German Open, with one day to spare. Good first race, made a bit of a mistake not covering on uh, the second beat, but we were able to make it up on the downwind leg, so good first two races, and then an OCS in the third race, we knew someone was over, but they didn't call numbers, so we had to give away that second, uh, but all three boats were really close today, good, good, good racing, very close with Christian on the on the second race, which is great. So, good day of racing. Good wind, good competition, pretty decent results despite the OCS. We have a theory if you don't get an OCS, you're not trying hard enough. So. <laughs> Great day today, actually a bit of bad luck for us. Um, hit a tourist in the first race, hit the boy in the next race, had to do some circles. But anyhow, it was great, great conditions, uh, lots of fun, great start, and then didn't come out in the end too well. But uh, no, everybody's quite having quite a bit of fun, I think. Yeah, it's great to have the fleet here in Flensburg. And uh, yeah, looking forward for, uh, to, to Hanko. I think it's a good tune-up now, and uh, everything, everybody's great in shape. We're uh, having uh, great racing. Close racing. It the annual Kiel Week regatta and on a beautiful day we have the highlights of day one. Day four ended up the first phrase of the regatta. The Olympic classes start next week. Day one of Kiel Week 2022 and the conditions could not have been more magnificent. Blue skies, summer temperatures and a good 11 to 14 knots on the regatta courses in front of the Olympic Centre Kiel Schilksee. A total of 3,500 sailors from 46 nations in 14 boat classes are competing in the 140th edition of Kiel Wheat Regatta this year. After two pandemic editions in 2020 and 2021, Kiel Avoca 2022 sees the event return to full strength, one of the top international regattas in the world. Before Kiel Avoca officially opened this evening at Kiel's Town Hall Market, the sailors, together with Kiel's Lord Mayor Dr. Ulf Kampfer, held their special opening at the Kiel Schipsee Olympic Center. Today on the TV course, it was the 140 athletes competing in the 29er class in their Euro Cup. A perfect start to the regatta for two New Zealanders, George Lee Rush and Sebastian Menzies, who dominated all their races. With three race victories, the Kiwis put themselves at the top of the classification, ahead of the German duo Karl Kraus and Max Georgi from Rostock Sailing Club, who scored two victories today. 
Tomorrow, the racing continues in Kiel with a light airs forecast, and it's the turn of the Ilka 6 class to compete on the TV course. A day of surprises on the last day of the 29er Euro Cup at Kielovaka 2022. Three different day winners and a favourite duo who briefly faltered. And a brother and sister from Sweden who, despite winning the day, still didn't quite make it onto the final podium. Challenging conditions for the sailors in the 29er, the junior class, on their last day at Kiel Week. Light shifty winds and a patchwork of breeze spread across the course made for a tricky final day in the 29er competition. With a big lead, the two New Zealanders, George Lee Rush and Sebastian Menzi, started today ahead of the Rostock duo Carl Krauser and Max Georgie. After a brilliantly sailed regatta, surely nothing could go wrong for the Kiwis. Uh, sailing more, more to the sort of wind uh, than the fleet just in these conditions. And yeah, just keep doing what we're doing and hopefully that can do it. And yet the two Kiwis suffered a rare failure of tactics in the first two races today. In the opening race, they finished in a respectable ninth place, but in the next race, they gave away a lot more ground and found themselves back in 16th. This left the door wide open for the German 29er duo Kraus Georgie to seize a Kiel Week victory. The Spanish duo Martino Lodos Falcon and Martina Diaz Salguero from Gran Canaria won the first race of the day. Excitement in the next race and a duel between the Swedish sibling pair of Hedwig and Hugo Lilligren against the Hungarians Luka Kisolsgemi and Hanga Ugron. The decisive moment in the race came with the choice of the left gate before the final cross, which allowed the Swedes to sail free and keep the Hungarians back at a distance behind them. Hedwig and Hugo Lilligren secured their lead and took their second win of the day, enabling them to move up to third place in the overall standings. This set the stage for an exciting third race. However, all the podium favourites suffered from a mediocre start. But the New Zealanders were the first to find their mojo and get back in the groove. With a third place, the Kiwis defended their lead in the overall ranking and took their first ever Kila Voka victory. We are sure to hear a lot more from this dynamic duo in the future. Second place went to Kraus and Georgie from Rostock, just in front of the Italians De Mertas and Santi who came in third overall. A big mishap on the final downwind leg for our Swedish sister-brother combo, the Lilligrens. Hemmed in by a throng of boats, they were prevented from crossing the finish line in good shape and ended up only 20th in the final race. This dropped the Swedes to fifth overall. So in the end, the limelight rightly belonged to the New Zealanders, Lee Rush and Menzies, who had taken seven out of 12 race wins and will surely one day follow in the Olympic footsteps of those world-beating 49er sailors from New Zealand. Uh, yeah, it feels pretty good. Uh, we had a little bit of a ropey day today, but yeah, it's um, re relieving to manage to do it. <laughs> oh, it's, it's real good for us, I think. It's the start of our European tour and um, yeah, it's good to get some racing under our belt after being away for so long and yeah, it's good. Today marks the conclusion of the first part of Kielabocca, which will be celebrated this evening with a big sailor fireworks party and Kiel Schilksi. Tomorrow, part two of Kielabocca will start with top class competition in the Olympic fleets. The program starts on Wednesday with the foiling mixed class of the NACRA 17.